Hello and uh, welcome to this short video uh, titled Awesome Vim Static Analysis. In this video we're going to look at static analysis and how we can do it in Vim. My name is Martin Schroeder at SwedishEmbedded.com. You can become a subscriber at Swedish Embedded for more in-depth content related to embedded firmware development. That's what we do and that's what we consult in and that's what I create videos on. So let's get started. Today we're going to talk about static analysis and uh, integrating it into Vim. And this basically means that you can lint as you type. So you can get errors displayed directly in your editor and you can see if there's any problems with your code without having to recompile it, without having to run a lint tool explicitly uh, on your code. And this has a number of benefits. First of all, we are shortening the cycle between um, actually making a mistake in the code and discovering that mistake. And uh, especially with uh, modern uh, CI pipelines where we have static analysis embedded in the CI pipeline, you don't want to write your code, compile it, and let's say it compiles fine, but then you push it to the pipeline and it fails in the pipeline. That is way too long delay between making a mistake and actually fixing it. So with static analysis in our editor, we can achieve a fast response time. We can see the errors right away without having to uh, run any manual commands. And this has a huge benefit in uh, increasing your productivity and helping you write better code. And for Vim, for Vim, we have the asynchronous lint engine as the primary plugin that supports a lot of different tools and integrates those external tools with Vim. Asynchronous lint engine, you can install it as a plugin. It's called dense analysis for slash ALE and the, the, Git, uh, the GitHub URL is exactly the same as well. You can go to their site and uh, find more information about how to install this plugin. And I recommend that you use at least NeoVim 0.9 or um, a later version of Vim because there's a lot of uh, language server stuff uh, that these types of plugins use. And uh, language server is a rather new um, a thing that came up in, in the recent years and um, newer versions of Vim have much better support for language server. So your experience is going to be a lot more smooth. You're not going to run into problems that you can't easily solve. So personally, I would just go and uh, download the latest uh, uh, Neo Vim version, compile it yourself if you want to, and then just install uh, the plugins and use the, the newer version of, of the editor itself. So the key features of uh, the asynchronous lint engine include that uh, you, you can run uh, the linting asynchronously. And um, the, biggest, the biggest benefit of this plugin is that it integrates with existing tools. It's not actually a, a linting tool itself. It integrates with a lot of different other tools that actually do the linting. And it runs those tools asynchronously. So uh, language server support is not necessarily needed. Um, it can work with uh, with just uh, plain scripts. It can work with tools that that have to be run um, to get the errors, but it's going to do so asynchronously using the task management that is already embedded in Vim. Uh, and uh, it will present those errors to you in an easy uh, to view uh, to view fashion, basically directly in uh, in the editor itself. It has uh, built-in support for a lot of plugins. It has basic code navigation. For code navigation, I would use other plugins, uh, but this plugin does provide uh, basic navigation based on the uh, language server. So you can jump to definition and jump to declaration and things like that. Uh, but primarily I use this plugin for, for linting. That's the, that's the most useful function that, that really helps every single day. Um, you can also fix code automatically. It does have support, um, although limited, but it does have support for fixing. So you can do auto fixes uh, to try to fix the lint errors automatically. And tools like Clang Tidy, for example, they do support uh, auto fixing to a certain degree. It's not perfect, but it can fix some errors um, and save you some time. Uh, then we have, um, obviously, we can customize the interface. There's a lot of different options related to the interface, um, and it does integrate with other plugins, such as uh, Conquer of Completion, uh, which does uh, more advanced uh, code completion tasks. It can actually pass those results to ALE, and you can display uh, more informative messages uh, using ALE. So it does integrate with other plugins, and also it can integrate with um, the status line, so it can show the results on the status line. Uh, but the, I would say that the primary use of it is, is to do inline displaying of uh, lint errors directly in, in the editor. 
So we can have a look at the linters that are available. Uh, there is a page uh, uh, called supported linters and uh, it has a full list of the available linters. So if we look at C for example, um, the one that I like the most is Silang Tidy and Silang D is another alternative that also uses the same uh, code as Silang Tidy. It can actually run Silang Tidy checks, but Silang D is a language server, whereas Silang Tidy is a, is a common line tool that you run on your code. So they have a little bit different way of operation, but ALE can support both. And you can see that there is just so many different plugins or there's just so many different applications that are supported by ALE that uh, you can do linting on pretty much any document that, you, that you're using in your project. You can do linting on YML files, you can do linting on D files, Dart, uh, almost any kind of programming language that you can think of. Anything that is in wide use, uh, ALE probably supports it. Um, so let's go back here. And uh, let's continue with the presentation. So we can have multiple linters also per file type. So you can use, for example, cspell. You can use Alex as an additional linter for plain text files. Um, and you can use ALE info command in any file to see what linters are supported for that particular file. So you can just open any file after you've installed ALE and you can run this command to see what linters are supported. And then you, you will need to obviously install the linter as a package in Ubuntu, for example, you would install uh, let's say you, you install Flake 8 for Python, you will have to install that package to have the linting functionality available because there's just so many linters, you don't want to install all of them uh, when you install the plugin. So the plugin just comes with the functionality to interface with them and then you can install the linters that you want to use. And by using ALE info, you can see which linters are available so you can pick the one that you prefer to use uh, with ALE. And uh, here's a basic configuration uh, for ELE. Uh, we basically, uh, we can define patterns uh, that we want to ignore. So for example, for commit message, we might not want to have any linters at all, uh, including any kind of syntax uh, or um, spell checking linters. If you want to disable all the linters, you can do, you can do it uh, specifically for specific types of files. Uh, we can then uh, define the linters we want to use. So for example, for uh, YAML, we want to use YAML lint. For C++, we want to use Silang tidy. For C, we want to use Silang tidy. For ASCII doctor, we might want to use cspell or some other kind of plugin that, uh, or linter or spell checker that that we prefer to use for a particular type of file. And then there are fixers as well. So we might, we might want to use um, Silang Tidy as well as a fixer, uh, or we uh, might want to uh, remap it to a Silang format. So whenever we do like a, a, a fix operation on a file, we might want to just run it through Silang format. And, um, or you can use the default. So there's a lot of defaults that are already defined uh, and you just need to install the applications that um, actually do the, the linting, the tools themselves. Um, there are a few general settings uh, that you usually would set in your uh, Vim configuration file. And with Vim, you have um, everything is kind of uh, configured in text and it's, um, it's quite practical once you understand that this is kind of the way you do it. Uh, so there's a lot of variables that are well documented in the ALE documentation that you can set and um, modify just to, to get kind of better behavior and to um, adjust ALE to your needs. Um, for C and C++, uh, I prefer to use Silang Tidy and uh, you can configure uh, specific Silang Tidy options uh, that are going to be used in the editor. So you can have still uh, a configuration file that will be used uh, for the CI process, but then in the editor you can, for example, enable more options and it's actually a good idea to enable more options in the in the editor than you have in the CI because you might not want to run um, you might not want to fail the pipeline on uh, precisely everything that that could be a problem with your code like sometimes it's things like uh, the line is too long or maybe um, it's uh, a function that is uh, Growing, growing in complexity, or there's maybe something, something else that is very minor, not necessarily like anything related to code, and so you can have more uh, linting done in the editor than uh, the linting that you actually do to quality assure the code in the pipeline. And you can configure the options for every plugin. Uh, you have a number of variables that you can set different options for, for the plugins. You can check out the 
configuration for uh, Silang Tidy to see which options you can put here. Um, and there is a number of checks that, that you can enable or disable in Silang Tidy uh, to, to be executed on, on the code that you're writing. And uh, you can also specify build directory names. So for example, if you're working with Zephyr, you would have the build. You, can, you, can have, you might have some release directory or debug directory or some custom path for, uh, for the directory names. And you can configure them using this variable. Now, um, one thing about Veeam to remember is that um, you can run commands specific to the project or you can run, run commands specific to a particular file. So you could actually determine that maybe when you're uh, running or using a project that is related to Zephyr, maybe you want to uh, find this directory uh, using some function, for example, or maybe you want to have some other type of format for this directory or a path where um, uh, where the build files are placed. And uh, you can do this using automatic commands in, in Vim script. Um, I would suggest you check out how to actually do it in Vim script. You can use auto command. Uh, this this type of syntax to um, reconfigure this option specifically for uh, for your file that that you are that you have opened in the editor. Uh, then we have we can also for example do uh, a little custom thing. We could say that we want to load the Silang Tidy config based on um, the parent directory. So we can find a Silang Tidy config in this way, and then we can set those options um, based on the file that we've actually found. So this is there's a lot of different customization options that you can uh, code in Vim, Vim script. And you know, Vim is a programmer's editor, so coding is kind of natural to us, and we can customize the editor in this way. So here are some results that you, that you can achieve with uh, ALE. And first of all, when you're using Silang Tidy, you're going to see all the Silang Tidy errors reported in the in the code as you type. Uh, you can also use it for uh, YAML, uh, for example, for the GitLab CI pipeline. That will also show um, lint errors, which are reported by YAML lint in this case. Um, you can also use it for Python, uh, where we would for example, use Flake 8 linter and get the lint errors directly in the editor. And all of this is seamless. So like when you switch to a Python file, you get the same functionality, but just for Python. We can use it for robot framework files and use a robot framework linter uh, to interface it with ALE. And it's the same concept and it's going to show the errors uh, to you and uh, you can then fix them right away instead of having to, you know, run the compilation again. Uh, you can do you can add spell checking as linters for plain text files, which will also plug into this system. And basically, you you'll see the errors from spell checking as well. So ALE is very powerful, and um, ALE is kind of following this uh, concept that is. Uh, used throughout Vim editor where you have plugins that interface with other tools. And in this way, you can support a lot of different tools in the same plugin. Like if you go to uh, Visual Studio Code, you need to download, let's say, Silang, Silang D plugin. And that will give you support for Silang D, but then you don't have support for all the other things. With uh, plugins like ALE, you, you just download one plugin and then all of those other tools seamlessly just plug into this plugin. So it's quite uh, powerful and it's very, very, very useful. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you can start using Vim more professionally where you can actually draw even more power out of this editor. It's a great editor and I like it a lot. See you later. Have a good day.